some people have seen where God has brought you from. They don't really understand it. They don't know your story. My name is Thomas Van Johnson. I am an ex-PI. I already know what you're thinking. Private investigator. No, P-I-M-P. I'm going to take you all the way back when I was just six years old, first grade. I got all A's from the first grade to the second grade to the third grade. Until I met Dewdrop, that's when things changed. That's when I started stealing. I remember getting caught stealing some beans. You see, my mother used to give me a lick to go to the grocery store, but I used to steal everything on the list until I got caught. I'm a fast forward 10 years. Now, I'm in Dixon home. That's where I was raised. I see all my friends going to jail 20 years, rest of them getting killed. And I seen the Memphis pimps coming from New York. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the big P. I'm finna fast forward. 10 years later, I'm a New York Jack. I ain't no Memphis Redbeard. I'm three deep with no sleep. I ain't have to wait till Christmas to say, you know what he said every year. And when I saw my mama, she said, boy, what you gonna do with your life? I said, mama, I got three Peckerwoods. I'm on my way to buy me a Fleetwood. I'm gonna take them to Hollywood and I'm gonna do real good like a pimp should. The poem I'm about to do, it calls, Inner City Fame, go like this. So weak to the love of money, I refused to put up a fight. Crime, foolishness, and corruption was the mess of my life. Labor continued playing that get money game. Golden necklace, slick new car. I love the itty city fame. Cruising the addies and dangerous streets. Changing that money, man. Shining from my head to my feet, pleasing my itty city fans. You the boss, you the boss. The young men often cried. So I kissed my jewel-filled hand, and I gave my pride a ride. I had smoke, and I had dope. If you want to be cool, you got to climb that rope. So I pulled, and so I climbed, trying to reach the sky. To my surprise, time robbed me, and I couldn't even buy a high. It is said the fame ain't my friend. I've been greatly deceived. While I was riding slick and high, I should have been on my knees. Jail time and poverty ran away my fan. Pawn shops and unpaid loans stripped my jewel-filled hand. Who is this man in the mirror? Somebody called the police. This guy must have crawled up in here while I was fast asleep. The look of death is on his face. I'm going back to church. Somebody got to save me because I have been greatly hurt. Save me from this man. Oh, Lord, he ain't got no mercy. He took all my silver. He took all my gold and he took my youth from me, but he didn't take my life. Thank you, Jesus. I remember being in New York, brand new Mercedes, all kind of Rolexes, but I was miserable, lost, because no one loved a pimp but God and his mama. And I had to watch my mother die of a Lou Garrison's disease. That's when things started going all the way down. That's when I started doing hair run. I didn't have no idea that the hair, one week you got a Jones. The next week, you have a monkey, and then it turned to a gorilla, and then it turned to King Kong. And once you get King Kong, it's a wrap. Now, fast forward 10 more years. I'm in Chicago with, with King Kong on my back. Now, people have told me not to be down on where I was, but they took me to jail anyway. And when they tried to let me out, I didn't want to go because I didn't have a chance to go get, take care of King Kong. So I'm walking down the street, throwing up, throwing up, and looked up and said, God loves you. Come in as you are. So I go inside, two weeks, I throw it up. They brought me jello. These people took very good care of me. And I asked, I said, what, what's the name of this place? They said, you're a Pacific Garden Mission. That was my first time being drug-free because they, I had to sign a paper saying for two months, you, would, you have to be here for two months 
in order to finish the program. So I like to play the first time hearing about God's word. After the two months, they wanted me to stay a year because they said the devil was too tough. But I thought I had it because that was my first time being drug free since my mother died. So, so I decided to leave. I go back to Memphis. First day, a friend of mine said, come go to California with me. Next, next thing you know, I'm in California. He said, we're going to be out there three days. Three years go by. I'm back on drugs, heroin, smoking crack. I had to go to three rehab just to get off drugs. Now here I am on skid row, smoking crack, doing heroin. And one day, this brother didn't want to pass the pipe. So I said, hey, hey, player, player, you ever play football? He said, yeah, I was a wide receiver. I said, I, I, I know you want a quarterback because you don't know how to pass that pipe. So he was talking about killing. So it was time to get out of California. So my little girl said, Daddy, come to Virginia. I got a place for you to stay. And I hadn't seen my little girl in some years. So I said, that sounds like a good idea. So I go to, Calif uh, so I go to Virginia. And the first night she said, Daddy, come go to church with me. I said, I was so proud of my little girl going to church. So I go to church. We're in church. And I remember the pastor saying, come down as you are. Whoever want to find God, come down front. So I'm sitting there. And I got to talking to the devil. I said, I need to go down and find. I'm tired of being a dog. I want to turn that D-O-G around and find G-O-D. It's time for me to take off my fleet collar so I can find out about this God that's been saving me over and over and over, open jailhouse over and over. And I told the devil, I said, look here, if it don't work, I'll be right back. So I go down front. I gave my life to God. And on my way out the door, it was a feeling that came over me that I had never felt before. A week gone by, and I'm still a Christian. And I'm one, I said, what do Christians do? I've been a Christian for a week, and I need to find out what Christians do. And my little girl said, Daddy, all good Christians need a job. So I said, okay, little girl, let's go find one. What I'm going to do by my residue? She said, Daddy, you ain't smoking weed. You mean resume. I said, OK, little girl. So the next day, we go job hunting. I was so excited. Just like going, going to school for the first time, going to get me a job. So we stopped by the McDonald's on the way to the job site. We get inside the job site. I'm filling out the application. It comes to the part, it says, List your last three jobs. I said, little girl, what should I put? She said, let me call somebody. I said, oh, little girl, I don't lie no more. Uh, we come back to that. She said, OK. So we go, we go down for it. She said, I said have, you, have you ever had a felony? My little girl said, daddy, you ever been to jail? I said, yeah, little girl. She said, what for? I said, 400 and pimping. She said, let's go. She, she was, she was, woo. She said, daddy. And when she got back in the car, she said, daddy, for one thing, you can't be eating no cheeseburger when you're filling out an application. I said, look, girl, that wasn't no cheeseburger. That was a Big Mac. She said, daddy, you ain't no Mac no more. She was real upset at me. I couldn't wait to get back to church the next Sunday. So I know God had a message for me. So the next Sunday, the pastor came out. He said, get personal with God. Tell God what you want. So I go home, and I got on my knees. I said, God, give me a hard job moving furniture. I love moving furniture, something to keep my body in shape. So I go to sleep, wake up 3 o'clock that morning, take out the garbage. And there was a lady 
that looked more like a man said that her girlfriend had kicked her out and her furniture was out front. So I told her, I said, put your furniture in my little girl house and come back when you can. She came back the next day and she said, she said, uh, I'll give you five dollars if you take me to get my check. I said, okay. So we get to the job site and I looked up. It said, furniture you moving. I said, just ask God for this. I said, let me go check and see what's going on. So when I go inside, and when that man said, yes, he hired, and he want me to come to work Monday to take a drug test. And I just remember, wow, what happened to King Haran? I hadn't did no dope since I'd been there. God sprinkled something on me and took the taste away. I said, wow, this God thing is real. He done gave me a job. I don't know where the hair run went. He took that away. I said, this God thing is real. I can't. The first week, I bought me a Bible because I want to know about this God that been opening these jails house and saving me over and over and over. And the first thing I saw when I opened the Bible was J-O-B. I said, my little girl was right when she said all oh, good Christians need a job because it's in the Bible, a job. I, I had a lot to learn. So now I'm a Christian. God then gave me his, my first job. And I'm going to say a poem. The name of this poem is The Good High. You want to get high, so you're going to do smoke. You want to feel real good, so you're going to do dope. Let me tell you about a man who have a master plan with the grace to get high in the palm of his hand. He will bring you out of darkness to this marvelous light. He will give you peace that let you rest at night. From the days of my youth, I look for that high. That smoke, dope, eyes could never satisfy. I was on a road in a deep dog hole, picking up trash from every single round. My neck was in the air my head above the cloud, but my heart and soul was buried underground. You want to get high? Let me give you some good advice. Have dinner with God your maker and suffer with Jesus Christ. He will give you a high that won't let you down. He will pick you up from under the ground. All praise be to God who sent his son to lead us. Let all the God cheering say, get high with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God talks to you when you're reading the Bible. One morning I was reading the Bible, God said, I want you to write a book. I said, God, yeah, you know, I can't read a rope. He said, don't come with that reading rope. I got you, Thomas Van Johnson. I said, what am I going to talk about? Tell the world how I saved you over and over and over and opened all these jailhouse. Although you were serving the devil, I was there for you. I said, okay, thank you, Jesus. And the next day, I'm reading the Bible. God came to me with something that was, whoo, it hit me. He said, Thomas Van Johnson, I want you to go to Memphis, Tennessee. I said, Memphis? I said, for what? He said, I want you to go tell and show everybody what I've done. I said, Lord, can I just email them or test them? He said, Thomas Van Johnson, you only have a telephone. And even if you had a phone, you can't test. I said, all right, God, you know everything. Thank you, Jesus. One thing I do know is God judge your heart. That's why the heart is in the Bible 830 times, 725 in the Old Testament, and 105 in the New Testament. God gave me a new heart. He said in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25, 26, he said, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart. I place a new spirit inside of you. I take away your stormy heart and I will give you a heart of flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The devil had my mind, but God searched your heart. 
He said in Jeremiah chapter 17, 9, 10, he said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, searched the heart. I tried the rim, even giving every man according to his way, according to the fruit of his doing, the heart. I remember being in New York with all this money, brand new Mercedes, changed Rolex if I was miserable, broken hearted, because no one loved a pimp but God and his mama. And when I lost my mama and didn't know God, but the Lord was near me all the time. He said in Psalm 34, 18, he said, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. But you got to do what Matthew 7, 7. You got to ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Thank you, Jesus. For, thank you, Jesus. And you also got to do what Proverbs 3, 5, 6. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And 828, Romans 828 said, we know all things work together for good to those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. The Lord my shepherd, I shall not want. Make me to lie down in green pasture. He lead me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the battle of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, the rod, the staff, the comfort me, that prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy, that not my head with oil, my cup is running over. Surely in goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Thank you, Jesus. Last year at my church, Brown Baptist, was a year of love. And God sent me two beautiful poems. The man of Jesus Christ is a man of love. That's the first one. I wish I could give the man of love to all of my brothers. Then they would have peace in the midst of all the trouble. They would say victory, even when the situation utter defeat. For God can keep man cool, even in the midst of fire and heat. When the pressure of this world put them in a squeeze, they would not faint of fear, but bow down on their knees. They would shout, victory, victory is mine if I hold my peace. For the Lord that's on my side would never suffer defeat. If the Lord God would give the brother Jesus mine, they would be delivered from life of sin and crime. They will not rob, neither would they steal. Prosperity comes not by what man take. Prosperity comes by what man give. With the mind of love, they will praise God, even when things are really rough. For the mind of Jesus, not weak, but love, strong and tough. With love on his mind, Jesus bore the cross for us. I believe the mind of love will raise us up from the dust. This is my prayer to all of my brothers and sisters of this life. God, give them the man of love, the man of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Now abide in faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Thank you, Jesus. The name of this poem is The Fire of Love. Love is the fire. It has a beautiful flame. When the waters of trouble flow, the flame does not change. When a faithful wife finds love, she keeps an orderly home, guiding her children skillfully, her endless work unknown. Open her lips graciously, the things she says are right. Her husband's head is lifted, she crowns him with delight. Her fire is always burning, it smells pleasantly nice. This is how a fat love burns in a faithful wife. The husband who has loved, nourished and cherished his wife, shouting his home with blessings, he reflects the life of Christ. 
He regarded neither heat or cold to furnish his family bread, praising the Lord continuously with truth he bows his head. He stretches out his hand to the needy and to the poor. He builds the stairs of hope before the shepherd's door. His purpose in life is heavy, a charge from God above. He shall meet the measure in him, the five love. A church with sisters and brothers working faithfully in Christ. Hearts bond together with love. God, he blessed this way of life. A minister filled with love may bow in prayer for hours. He knows the fire love will break the wicked power. Love is the fire that water cannot contain. A burning in awesome power with most venom and flame. And indeed, the fire love first burned in heaven above. God sent his only son. By the fact called love. Thank you, Jesus. My book is out now, Pimp to Paradise. I also have an audible book that came out. You can reach it at Amazon or go online. Pimp to Paradise, Thomas Van Johnson. Thank you, Jesus. I wish my mother could see me now. The name of this poem is, If My Mother Could See Me Now. If my mother could see me now, she would lift her head with delight. For the darkness she saw in me is gone because of the light. I was drowned in pride and foolishness. My way was definitely wrong. The ignorance of my unchaste mind made the sin of my heart exceedingly strong. My mother used to shake her head as if to say, is this really my son? If she could see me now, she would say the night had changed to dawn. I will never forget my mother's love. For me, she was always there. Even when I wore platform shoes and long locks like women hair. I can now imagine when at times when I was in jail and there was no relief when I got out. For I was content walking in hair. I thought I was walking on a red velvet carpet in a pretty white room with satin sheets, but I was standing on the devil's tongue, and the white that I saw was his jaw teeth. There may be many nights when my mother couldn't sleep. You see, when a child's in trouble, a mother can't really have no peace. If my mother could see me now, she would be so amazed to hear me say, Thank you, Jesus, would set her heart ablaze. If my mother could see me now, I believe she would have joy to see a child a change to a real man from a devilish boy, from hell to peace, from death to life, from darkness to light, from calm man and pimp to heaven and paradise. If my mother could see me now, thank you, Jesus. Change is the name of this poem. I must have been born on a bad sign because I was off the hook and out of time. I thought I was running on the right road, but the bath I was carrying was a heavy load. Praise be to God for his love and grace. The downfall road to hell is such an ugly race. But God has shown me through the winds of truth. The devil can't hold a man who the Lord let loose. Oh, praise be to God for turning this pimp around taking my head out the air and putting my feet on solid ground. Just like Adam, the devil tricks is designed to please us. I'm on God's side now. That's why I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My book been out now for three years. The Audible book been out now for about one month. And finna get started on it three-part documentary about what God done done. How he saved a wretch like me. Thank you, Jesus. I am so happy. Thank you, Jesus. He is Of the Lord.
Pueblo.